Hey guys, it's Brickman117. Welcome back to the channel and my review of the 2014 Halo Mega Block set 97381 UNSC Elephant Troop Carrier. Set comes with 1,311 pieces and six figures. The UNSC Spartan Carter, Spartan Jun, a UNSC Marine Officer, two UNSC Marines, and a UNSC Marine Medic. So that's right, you heard me correct. This set is from 2014. It is now seven years old, so I am somewhat late to the game. But for me, it may as well be brand new. I've never built one before. You may have recently caught the speed build that I released on the channel. And I was so impressed with the build, I decided I was going to do a review for it anyway, even though it is an older set. Before we move on to my thoughts about the set, I just want to declare that I did actually buy this second hand off of eBay as a complete boxed set, albeit four years ago. I paid £124 for this as well as 11 other boxed sets with things like the broadsword and so on. At the time, it was the most I'd spent on a boxed haul and I ummed and ahed about buying it. Obviously, I'm glad I did now, considering that if you wanted one of these even used in a box, you'd probably be paying £150 just for the elephant itself. And if you want one brand new, you're going to kiss goodbye to around £300. And just for the record, I don't have one brand new in the box. One final thing about the set being used was unfortunately half of the stickers from the sticker sheet weren't present. So there are some stickers missing around the set and the ones that were there, they'd lost their stickiness. So you will see some of them appearing up slightly. The only other bit that was a bit of a frustration was there was one missing piece. And frustratingly, it's the Serena minifig for the holo table that goes in the back. So I was convinced I've seen this somewhere, but for the life of me, I cannot find it. And then the final part that was missing was the jetpack for Carter. But again, I know I've got some spare jetpacks around. I just couldn't find one for use in this review. So let's start off by taking a look at these figures. And the two Marines that come with this set are identical aside from their skin tone. What surprised me here was I didn't realize how old this set was being 2014. And it surprised me even more when I discovered that the figures that came with it were actually the super articulated figures that we currently have, which just goes to show how long we've had this current superposable micro action figure from Mega Constructs. Now, I must confess, these style of Marines were one of my favorite until Mega brought out the current Infinite lines. Now, obviously, now my favorite Marines are the current Infinite lines simply because they are so versatile with being able to swap helmets and so on. But if you put that aside for a second, I still think for a seven year old figure, these guys look pretty impressive. And as you can see, they're still more than capable of being manipulated in some incredibly realistic looking poses. Moving on to the UNSC officer, I would say personally, this is the one letdown of the set. Now, I'm going to go on the record and say I don't like this figure, but it's not because I think it's a bad figure. I think it's been poorly executed. And when I say that, I think it was just an oversight in the manufacturing process. Now, when you compare this figure to the UNSC Marines previously shown, the officer has a different upper chest armor piece. And this piece is finished with a gloss finish. If you look past the slightly shoddy paintwork on the green, which sometimes you get good ones, sometimes you get bad ones. That's not the problem. The problem is the gloss finish. Compared to his legs and the rest of him, he's got more of a satin finished, as have the Marines across their entire figure. This also extends up to the face. Now, when they're not covered, the faces are tricky. It's not easy to make a realistic looking human face compared to a covered face inside a helmet or even with the Marines where it's only partially covered. But what really lets this figure down is he's been painted with a gloss finish all over his skin, which gives him a very shiny, plastic, unrealistic look compared with the Marines that have just got a matte finish over their skin, which looks so much more realistic. And for me, if those two things were changed, this figure would be 10 times better. When it comes to the UNSC Medic, I'm happy to report no such complaints. Everything about this figure is pretty much perfect. The paintwork is absolutely pin sharp. He's got brown paint application on his inner thighs, the red markings on his forearms, shoulder armor, and helmet, 
albeit that the red is a slightly different color on the helmet, but I think we're all used to that given the change of plastic used for the heads as opposed to the rest of the figure. The black paintwork on his body armor as well as the front of his helmet is absolutely perfect and his skin and the visor for such a small area it's one of the best i've ever seen as mentioned earlier sometimes the paintwork does get a bit sloppy but given that most of these are painted by hand i think you can either get a good guy or a bad guy and this guy is definitely a good guy when it comes to the spartans things just get better the molds and the paintwork and the articulation everything on these figures is absolutely perfect i don't know if i just got lucky with this set i've mentioned that the paintwork was a bit sloppy on the officer but aside from that nothing else is amiss with these figures this is the first Carter I've got in my entire collection. I don't actually know whether you can get him in any other sets. By all means, let me know in the comments below. The same goes for Jun. It's the only Jun figure I've got too. The other question I've got is who is the hero figure in this set? Is it Jun or is it Carter? Both of these guys are incredibly popular within Halo lore. So it does make me wonder who was the main figure intended in this set. When it comes to this set as a whole, the Elephant is a fantastic build. We'll talk about that shortly. But I have to say, now that I've built the Elephant, I've had a good look at the figures, I've had a chance to digest the set, it's these two figures here that really sell it for me. I'm just so impressed by the quality and the detail of these tiny little two-inch action figures. It still blows my mind how accurately they can recreate these figures from the Halo universe in such small format. So that's the figures just about done. So I am going to tell you which one my favourite is, and it's the Jun figure. Carter comes in a very close second. I just think that Jun figure is absolutely awesome. Feel free to let me know your favourite figure in the comments section below. And now we'll take a look at the elephant. When it comes to the elephant, the main reason I wanted to carry out this review was simply I was so impressed by the build process and its fantastic shelf presence afterwards. But I can't ignore the fact that for those that are interested, its playability factor is huge. The elephant is designed as a mobile command center and it's well equipped to service troops in the field. You can maintain vehicles utilizing its crane. It can defend itself with the multiple gun platforms as well as house troops safely in the rear section of the vehicle. As we move around the elephant, first thing we come across is the front stabilizers that are deployed just to give the elephant more stability for using its main cannon on top. Speaking of the main cannon, it doesn't have to be deployed. When it's in transport mode, it simply tucks the cannon away. As you can see, the side flaps lift up and then the cannon can just flop back down into the interior of the elephant, keeping it safe until required. Moving around to the cockpit, you're able to remove the roof section of the cockpit to make it easier to get a pilot in and out of there. It's still a bit of a fiddle if you've got big hands like me, but they do go in quite nicely. And once in, they look very well equipped to take this elephant wherever you require. Just moving off to the side of the cockpit, you've got the front load ramp, which as you can see, figures can walk in and out of there full height. You can also bring a mongoose in and out of there, not included with the set, but if you've got one, it will load up through there very nicely. Coming around to the side, we come across the crane. Now, this is a very specialized piece. Unusually, it doesn't actually come with anything in the set for you to lift up. But if you read in lore, this crane is there designed to carry out maintenance on vehicles whilst in the field. If they needed to pull an engine or something out of a warthog or change an axle, they can use that to lift the front of the warthog up and carry that maintenance out whilst in the field. You can see that you simply just rotate these little gears at the back and you can pull the main block down and you can extend or shorten the boom of the crane as well which is very very handy and then once you've got what you need you just wind the cable back up and you can lift move do whatever you like so in terms of playability i think this is an absolutely fantastic feature even if it is a very specialist bulky part and as we move around to the back of the elephant you can see one of three minigun platforms to which troops are able to man and defend the elephant should it be required. In regards to the main troop bay at the back, now they've only put four seats in here, but there's definitely room to expand that. In law, they can take many more troops than four. 
But I think that's a good thing because you get to adapt to this back section however you see fit. It's got lots of scope for being modified. You've also got the table for Serena if it wasn't missing. Hopefully I'll find it one day. And you've also got some digital readouts above plus a weapons rack. And speaking of weapons, this set comes with a huge amount of weapons, including three pistols, three assault rifles, two DMRs, two light machine guns, two rocket launchers, and two sniper rifles, all of which come in black. So to summarize my thoughts on this set, I'm really impressed with it. It's a good solid set with a good range of figures, even if they are somewhat out of place with each other and the vehicle in law. But in all honesty, I'm not too fussed about that. The figures are fantastic and I'm just grateful to get them all in one set. The vehicle itself, the Elephant, is a very interesting vehicle in lore. Yes, it's not quite accurate to the in-game representation, but I think they've done a fantastic job within the limitations I'm sure they were given. It's a good, fun, solid build with lots of interesting build techniques. Does it stand up to today's current standards? No, not quite. They have made a number of improvements since then, but is it better than the early days of sets like the Pelican Dropship? Most definitely. They've come such a long way over the years and this set just proves it. Seven years old already and it's still a really solid set. So if you do have this set and you've enjoyed this review, feel free to leave your thoughts about it in the comment section below. If you don't have it and you want one, I probably wouldn't recommend £300 for it if you could find one. But we can always keep our fingers crossed that Mega Constructs will produce another elephant in the future. So that's just about it from me. So I hope you enjoyed this review, even though it is an older set. And if you would like to see me create more reviews and speed builds for some of the older sets that Mega Blocks have created, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. But until then, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.